Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is CKT Chaotic. Today I'll be reading Midnight Populand, episode 5 to 6. So I did drop this read mainly because I was taking on a lot of like other webtoons. And also it's kind of hard because we all know who, everyone who did read this already, uh, Tora, the handsome devil, he has a potty mouth and YouTube is very strict on it. And I do kind of like, when I get really exhausted, I just like put it all together and post it, like put the blur, whatever is needed. But with this one, I have to go through the episode of my read and like censor myself. So I, I am not happy about that, but this is such a good read. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Warning. This episode contains scenes with graphic violence. And let me tell all of you right here, right now, the punk life disappearance has nothing to do with me. But more importantly, this thing that Goliath has in his possession. Oh. Tora! What the hell are you barging in dressed like that? So show some respect to the clan members. Now, now, Martin. Tora means no disrespect. I've trained him since he was a child, and I've done a rather good job, if I do say so myself. But Mr. Baltimore, I briefed Tora over the phone just now. Much appreciated, Smithy. Pray tell, gentlemen, what's going on here. Oh. <gasps> Don't kill them off before I hear what they have to say, Tora. <coughs> what's wrong with Smithy? Never seen Big Bro Tora go at it before. He's a goddamn beast. Of course I have, kid. I've been here even before you were born. That boy's violence and brutality is always shocking to watch. And now that Mr. Baltham is involved, rip those two street thugs. We have nothing to do with all this, Mr. Baltham. We only received orders from a man named Sh Shane. <coughs> Shane, you say? I wonder which clan he belongs to. You don't happen to have his contact details, do you? <coughs> yes, sir. But it's not with me right now. I can retrieve it if you just let us go. <coughs> you filthy liar. It's sitting safe and sound on your phone, isn't it? In any case, I can't have you blabbing to more of my rivals. Wait, we won't blab, I swear. No, please, no. <coughs> Take their phones and get rid of these, the clowns. So, what's all this fuss about a notebook? Only a handful of clan leaders are aware, and they're searching everywhere for it, apparently. Fuck if I know. Son, you are the only man who can talk to me this way and get out alive. If this notebook is so important, then surely I must get my hands on it before anyone else does. I want to leave this to our dear Martin and his boys, Scr Scratch, Scarch, and Claude. But since you've involved yourself this early, would you look into this for me? I know you've got your hands full playing bodyguard to my Quincy. But help me out, would you? And please stop killing your lungs. You might not have much regards for your own life, but I need you healthy and strong. Give me a pay raise. Deal. By the way, before I forget, Martin and the lads are having a lunch celebration tomorrow. And I insist you uh, join. And put on your suit, please. Don't go walking around dressed like this. I'll think about it. I have a code to nurse. Well, that's a difficult uh, underling you have, darling. Certainly. You may be a handful. But that boy's loyalty to me is second to none. A pay raise, huh? That's more makes more sense. After how Taurus distanced himself from clan affairs. 
I can't imagine why else he stepped in. Pshaw. Sure. You speak as if I've been underpaying my men. Maybe our boy wants a new toy. A Porsche? A Ferrari? Anyway, his distance is only temporary. He'll have to return from his little vacation eventually. After all, any dog that goes against the orders of his owner will be shot. And the dog knows it. Brand new shoes. I felt bad for Tora. <sighs> Look at all the trouble you caused at school. You're going to stay in there till I get back from a vacation. That's punishment. And before I leave, tell me, Tora boy. Are you scared of being down there on your own? No, no, Mr. Botham, sir. You're not scared? Then why are you hiding your face? Are you crying? I'm not scared. And I'm not crying. Good. Because I have no use for cowardly children. And if you should try to escape again, you know what will happen to you. Dad, where are you? Let's go. The driver's waiting. I'm coming, Quinceton. Just having a word with Tora. Where is he? Isn't he coming along? He always wanted to go see the beach with us. No, Tora's uh, grounded for misbehaving in school. Bomber. I'm not scared. Like hell, I'm not. You just dodged a bullet there, sweetheart. Well, it's so late now. I have two more streets to go before I get home. And a lunch meeting tomorrow with a potential investor. That meeting is super important and I can't miss it. Why didn't I think before attaching to the police station? Why am I so impulsive? Ah, oh, and how am I going to get out of my bed tomorrow? It's all about, it's all that pervert, perverted asshole's fault. <sighs> meow, meow, meow. Meow. Uh, a cat? Is it stuck up there? It might have climbed up but can't get back down on its own. Was it running away from something? Poor baby. Wait a minute. That branch is cracking. <gasps> it isn't too high up, but it might still get injured. I, I can't leave it stranded up there now that I've seen it. Oh, hang in there, Katie. I'm coming to get you. Oh, it's been a hot minute since I've climbed the tree. Yeah, it's me. How much more time do you need to run that background check? Chat her and up and ask, should I be flattered that you think so highly of my charm? No, I drove to some random neighborhood to get food. The one with a ton of cats. C c cats. Uh. Huh? Huh? You gotta be f kidding me. What the hell is she thinking? <gasps> that damn tree is too old to be climbed. <gasps> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, what's going on? I thought it was falling from a tree. Did I hit the ground? Uh, ow. I have no idea what just happened, but my head is spinning like crazy. Oh, look. Kitty is fine. At least I didn't go through all of that for nothing. Ah, uh, thank you. Would have been nice, though. Wait a sec. Am I in the middle of some kind of hyper-realistic dream? Maybe I'm actually still in bed. I feel so warm and snug. Oh, thank God. It was such a stressful dream. I'm just gonna snuggle back for a few more. You're not dreaming. Oh, goodness. You're not dreaming. That's a man's vo voice. Get up. I don't have it all night. That's a man's voice and it's coming from under me. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Did I hurt? Huh? Hey! Oh. 
I can't untie this knot. What, what are you doing? Did he just save me just so he can steal my money? Hey, mister, could you untie this knot? Where are you? I can't see a thing. Not that direction. Oh. Stop moving around. I'm right here. Hey, are you trying to mug me? Because I'm dead broke right now. <sighs> Why would I want to mug someone like you? I can't show you my face because someone like me, somehow I feel personally attacked. I'm a celebrity. What? For real? Yeah. Wow, no way. Anyway, did you hurt yourself? Bodyguard mode on. Can you move your arms around? I, I guess. What kind of celebrity are you? It's none of your business. Any pain then turn your head like this? Nope, so I'm guessing you're a singer? A what? Why would you guess that? Because you got a nice husky voice. I got a, using a higher pitch of false voice. Is she daft? Who the hell says those things to a stranger? I play a bit of guitar, but I can't carry a tune to save a life. Sorry to disappoint you. Crap, I think I sprained my neck. Guess you're fine if you're asking all these questions. That was quite a fall, so go see a doctor if something feels off. Wait, are you leaving now? You need to untie the snot for me. Ah. Uh, uh, just hold it this way and pull firmly. Got it? Okay. <sighs> He's gone. He sounds so kind and gentle, even though his arms are covered in tattoos. <laughs> Damn it, I was holding in just fine. The next day... <sniffs> Tora, come join us at the table. Everyone's there except for you, dude. What are you having? Strawberry juice. <laughs> Your strawberry juice, bro. Thanks, you. You. He wasn't kidding about the f juice, weirdo. You really something, huh? Prized bodyguards and right-hand man of Boss Baltimore. Haven't seen you in a while. But what that intuition of yours is razor sharp as ever. Though, it feels like there's something else going on here. Like there's something about this notebook that you're hiding from us. Of course, given the big boss trusts you so whole. What the hell? <laughs> oh, you talk a lot. He had me by the neck before I could react. How the f did he move so fa that fast? Did you see the tattoo on the man's neck? Yeah, it's a Baltham and crest. We better leave. <sighs> badum, badum, badum. God damn it, this intimidating as hell. Up close. Ah, uh, looks like there's no ashtray here. Any idea where I just stubbed my cigarette out? Badum, badum. Ba -dum, ba -dum. Crap, he's not even budging. His grip is too strong. Come on, let me have a go at him. I'll shake him up good, trust me. I wouldn't do it if I were you, Claude. That completely insane. He will absolutely F you up if you try. Scarge was right. The F really is insane. We're in the middle of a freaking uh, restaurant. L l let me go, you bastard. My eyes is burning up. I should have listened to Scarsh. God damn it. Big bro Tora, please use this ashtray. Silly me, I forgot to take it out. <laughs> so you do have one after all. Yeah. <laughs> you, you. Better leave it out so everyone can see it, huh? G got it, big bro. You. Help me, shun of a fish. You okay, Claude? Are you a, aren't you an MMA champion? Even then, you must have have a death wish messing with Big Bro Tora. Sh shut up! I think my eyes is burnt. Freaking pain in the ass, clan gatherings. Almost there now. <gasps> 
Is that Mr. Lamb? He's a little old grandpa. How cute. Mr. Lamb? Shoot, I hope he won't be too mad at me. I overslept because I stayed up all night editing work documents. Darn it, I slept through nine alarms? How's that possible? Puppy eyes and swollen from alternating between crying and working. Oh. Uh, yes, Mr. Lamb, I, I didn't forget our appointment. I'm on the way there now. But I'm just a few minutes late and he seems like a nice person, I hope. Mr. Lamb, I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. I hope you're sorry. I hope you are sorry. You're three minutes late. I was about to call for my chauffeur. What, what, what chauffeur? That's right. To take me back to my hotel because you were late. Darn it. This isn't going well at all. W were you about to leave? I am so sorry, Miss Lamb. It, it won't happen again, I promise. And of all people, why did they send a teenager? I'm not a teenager. I'm the new assistant editor manager for Giant Goldfish Publishing. Here's my business card. Poppy Lan Wilkes, assistant editor manager. My name is Poppy Lan, but you can call me Poppy. Uh, anyway, let's head inside now, shall we? This is an excellent restaurant and I'm sure you'll love the menu. Never mind, I'll just work harder to impress him during the presentation. <laughs> Mr. Lamb is a potential investor my boss left me in charge of. I hope you're ready for this presentation. Yes, sir. It's right here with me. And this is my very first business presentation. So darn if I'm going to screw this up. <laughs> and I think Mr. Lamb's going to enjoy this place quite a bit. The food is amazing and the atmosphere is nice and posh. Holy smokes. Even the patrons here, in here, look so distinguished and, and, uh, but don't, oh no, okay, they ran into each other, again, like, it's like fate, over and over again, they keep running into each other. Alright guys, if you guys enjoyed the way I read this, feel free to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, drop some comments, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!